All right, let's take a look at this homework number 12, drawing shear and moment diagrams. And basically, we had two different methods we could do. One is the method of sections, which is a little slower. I don't really recommend. It's not the preferred method, but if you need to, you can. Uh, I did the first one using that method of section so I can show you, but I'll show both ways uh, in case you did it the other way. What we have is a beam. We have this four kips per foot evenly distributed between point C and D and two eight kip concentrated forces. So the first step with all these problems is to solve for your reactions at A and at B. So of course there is no uh, X direction reaction at A because there's no X forces. So I didn't even draw that in. From some of the moments about A, I got B to be 18. And, and then from some of the forces Y, I got A to also to be 18. Now as a shortcut, if you feel comfortable, you could also say, look, I know there's four kips per foot over five feet. So there's a total of 20 kips pu pushing down basically at the midpoint. So there's symmetry in this whole thing. And these two eight kips are also at the midpoint. So I could take the 20 plus the two eights, which is, what is that, 36 divided by two. And that would be the load on each side because it's symmetric. It's symmetrically loaded, so I can do that. But be careful. If you're not sure about that, don't do it. Um, so using the method of sections, when I look at this thing, I have to draw a section in each discontinuity. So I need one from the beginning, and then I have a discontinuity at point C. So I would need to draw a section here. And then at D, I'd need a section there as well. So I would need to do three sections using the method of sections uh, on this problem. Uh, and so with the first section between A and C, if I draw a free body diagram, what's going on? I draw my shear and moment. Now I'm drawing both these in their positive direction, meaning it makes the beam smile for the moment and my positive shear is pointing down. As long as you're moving from left to right, meaning this is my cut anywhere between A and C, uh, that would be the notation. So from some of the forces in the Y, I get the shear force to be 18. From some of the moments, I got a moment to be 18 times X. And that means that the that X equals 0, my moment 0, and at X equal 2, which is the limit, I have 2 times 18, which is 36. And that should be a straight line along here. So I can graph that. I have 18 as a constant value, and I have that straight line of 18X on the moment, shear and moment. The next section between C and D. Now, if I draw a section here, I do have this uh, distributed load over some distance X, right? Uh, and I have the 18 and the 8 in there. That's what my free body diagram of the cut looks like. Some of the forces in the Y gives me a shear force of uh, minus 4x plus 18. And I went ahead and did the math. I said, well, it's going to be 10 at 2 feet and negative 10 at 7 feet. And for some of the moments about the cut, I get an equation for the moment, minus 2x squared plus 22x. Put in my values. I got 36 at 2 feet. And at 7 feet, I got 36. And then at the maximum, at the midpoint, I'm getting 58.5. So that one's definitely the hardest one to try and graph, right? I can see it's a parabolic shape. I can see that it is, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Method of sections doesn't really work out so well. But I'd have to know that the maximum's at the midpoint because I need to find that point. Um, in some way, shape, or form. And then the last section uh, between... This, this third one over here between uh, D and B, uh, that's this guy over here. Where, did I not do that section? Uh, it looks like I did not do that for some reason, but I can tell you that uh, it will be the same process or it is symmetric, and maybe I just knew it was symmetric, and so I just skipped over that. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of that way. What I would do instead is I would draw my load diagram. So this is using the graphical method. Draw this load diagram like that, where you have your forces of 18 on the two ends, the two 8 kip pointing down, 4 kip per foot. Then you're just looking at areas, and area equals change. So I have an area under this 4 kip per foot of 20. That's 4 kips per foot times 5 feet. So my area is 20 kips. And that area, area is equal change or concentrated forces equal a, a instantaneous change right so from the shear diagram what I do is I go up 18 because it says go up 18 you know this if you have an arrow pointing up you go up on your diagram I go over it says go down 8 so I go down 8 that brings me down to 10 then I'm going to continue to go down because these arrows pointing point down and I'm going to go down 
uh, a value equal to that area, which is at 20. So 10 minus 20 is negative 10. I'm making this thing look awful. Uh, and then I go down another 8. So that brings me down to negative 18. Go over, and then I go up 18. Brings me back up to 0, which means I probably did something right. Now, same idea with the moment diagram. I'm looking at areas. You can see my area, 18 times 2 is 36. Um, now, because this is a flat line, then this will be a line with a constant slope. We're always moving up in powers of level. So if I have a concentrated force, then it'll be a flat line. Flat line leads to a constant slope. If you have a constant slope, like we'll have next, that will be a parabolic shape, so on and so forth. So um, the area for these parts over here, uh, now we have a triangle. So I have to know where this this you know one half base times side I have to know what that base is right so I have to know where that intersection point is well I'm starting at a value of 10 and I'm decreasing at a rate of 4 kips per foot so I could develop an equation and say well I'm starting at 10 minus 4 kips per foot how many feet x until it's equal to 0 solve for x x is equal to 2.5 this one's a little easier because it is symmetric you're going from 10 to minus 10 so you may have been saying well I know it's going to cross the midpoint uh, over but whatever. So then you can find the areas of 12.5. Um, I didn't draw it in, but this would be negative 12.5 because it's below that axis, and this would be negative 36. It is symmetric. And then we can put that all into our diagram. So uh, from the 36, I'm increasing by 12.5. 36 plus 12.5 is at 48.5 because this is a straight line. This is a parabolic function. I do get questions sometimes, like if it's parabolic, how do I know if it's concave or convex? Um, this distance is the slope of the line. So when I'm at this cross, that means my slope is zero, which is a flat line. This is my strongest positive slope, so it's going up, so it has to be going that direction. Same idea over here. We're starting at zero, and we're getting more and more negative for our slope, so it has to be going that direction. Um, so, wow, a lot of explanation on that one. Oh, it did ask for the maximum values. You can just look at your graph and see the max shear is 18, max moment 48.5. Don't forget your units in there. Second one, definitely much more complicated. If you did method of sections, by the way, you'd have to do one, two, three, four different sections and develop equations and all that stuff. A lot of work. Instead, we're going to do this graphical way. Start like before by finding your reactions. By some of the moments about A, I got a reaction at B of 7.75. Some of the forces Y, I got a reaction at A of 7.25. Did I say a second? I meant B of 7.75, A of 7.25. Then I have this loading diagram. So after I have my load diagram, once again, looking at areas, I have one kip per foot over 10 feet. That gives me a load of 10. It is pointing down. I should probably say this is negative 10 because it is pointing down. I don't know. Technicality, I guess, or whatever. So just like before, we're starting. We're saying we have a concentrated load of 7.25. So we start at 0, and we go up. That's 7.25. Then we decrease 10 kips over this distance so that brings me down 7.25 minus 10 is negative 2.75 why don't I put my negatives in there um, and I know because this is a flat line this has to have a line with a constant slope meaning it's not parabolic in any kind of way it's just a line then nothing's happening so I just continue on until I get to the two kips it says go down two kips brings me to negative 4.75 Go over and it says go up 7.75. That brings me up to a positive 3. Go over. It says go back down 3, back to 0, and I'm done. The little blue things on the shear diagram are my areas. So to get this area of that 26.28, um, I need to find that intersection point. Similar to last time, I'm starting at 7.25. I'm decreasing at the rate of the distributed load. So 7.25 minus 1x is equal to 0. How far until I get to that 0 mark? And I can solve for x. I got 7.25 feet. So now I can find the areas of those triangles. I found the area to be 26.28. That is positive. And then negative 3.78. The reason it's negative is because it's below this x-axis. Um, so then with the moment diagram, because there's no moment on the end, I have to start at 0 and increase by that rate or by the uh, area in the triangle, 26.28. That brings me that maximum right there. And then because this is a straight line, now we're a parabolic function. Once again, to figure out if it's convex or concave, I'm looking at uh, this being my zero mark. So it has to be flat. And this is a much larger positive slope. So and, and it moves up that direction. Same idea on the other side. So I should be parabolic all the way down until I get to, to this point right there, right? 
And then from there, now I have to decrease 13.75, so 22.5 minus 13.75 brings me to 8.75 because this is a flat line, this line is a constant slope. Then I'm decreasing by 23.75, so now I'm going in that negative region. 8.75 minus 23.75 is negative 15, and then I'm increasing by 15. Once again, those are flat lines, these have a constant slope. So that's what my moment diagram looks like. I have a max shear of 7.25, max moment 26.28. The last one here, <clears throat> the reason this one is difficult is because I do have this concentrated moment. That's why I have it in here that throws people. I like to do that because it makes you think about what is a positive moment versus a negative moment. And I said like the positive moment makes the beam smile. Well, what does that mean? Well, the beam is frowning on this side, right? Well, maybe I shouldn't draw all that, but it's frowning on that side and on this side it's smiling. So it's positive on the right-hand side and we're moving from left to right, which means that we only look at this side which means it is smiling um, and so the first step just like before is to solve for those uh, reactions you can see I did that there I got by to be 67.3 ay to be negative 14.3 so it's actually pulling up at a um, or my reaction is pulling back down so from that going to my shear diagram it says go down 14.3 for the first thing so I go down to negative 14.3, then nothing happens when I get to this moment. Now, moment doesn't affect the shear diagram because it's a moment, so I just keep on going until I get to this negative 8. Negative because it's pointing down, so I go down another 8. That brings me that negative 22.3 over, then I go up 67.3. Then I have the area, 15 times 3 is 45. It is pointing down, so I'm saying negative 45. Up here is it positive 45, brings me down to 0. Because this is a flat line, I have a line with a constant slope. Once you do a couple of these, they start getting much, much easier because they're all somewhat the same. Then, uh, <clears throat> similar to last time, I have the areas in blue. So there is no moment on the very end, so I have to start at zero. And then I change by the areas. This is negative 28.6. It's a flat line, so I have a constant slope here, negative 28.6. Now, here comes the hard part. Is that a positive moment or a negative moment? And like I said, we're moving this way. So it is a positive moment because it would bank. This is like the deflection of the beam, right? Maybe you can see it. Like if you were to put a lever arm and twist it, that way it would be positive. So, um, so that positive means I have to go up the magnitude of that moment. That moment was what? Eight. All right. So I'm going from negative 28.6 up eight. That doesn't make sense. Uh, up 20. Helps if I read. Uh, brings me up to negative. I should negative 8.6. Then I have negative 14.3. Now these are straight lines and all until I get to the end because this would be a parabolic function. Um, and that parabolic function, once again, this is zero slope. So it's zero right here. This is my steepest positive slope. So, and it's decreasing as I move from one end to the other. So that's what the uh, moment diagram looks like for that one. Take a look at those. Oh, my max shear is 45, max moment negative 67.5 kilonewton meters. Take a look at that and uh, let me know if you have any questions on this homework. I'll talk to you all later. Thanks.